Hello, algebra students, and welcome back to another video lesson on the quadratic formula as we continue to expand the use of the quadratic formula and know when it's more efficient and effective to really use the formula. <clears throat> so just as a heads up, um, again, we got a week till spring break. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday is going to be a test, test, test. So we're really trying to ramp up and make sure we're prepared and ready for what's coming Friday. Um, another lesson today, a little bit of a target practice tomorrow on the quadratic formula before we get into lesson 9-6 and then some review on Thursday. Now, the quadratic formula, remember, here it is. And again, if you didn't write this down last week, you might want to do it today. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over twice A. A um, couple of reminders. One, our equation has to equal zero before we can actually find that A, B, and C value. So we need to make sure the equation is equal to zero and then try and put them in descending order, the x squared, then the x, and then the constant so that we can identify those three values. Now, here's, again, here's just an example of what we did, right? If this was the equation that we're trying to solve, x squared plus 3x minus 4, please do not do this, right? Don't move that four over and then take the square to both sides. That does not work. That is completely inaccurate. Gonna give you some really, really weird answers. Do not do this, Psst. all right? We need to use the quadratic formula where A was one, B is three and C is negative four. And so that's what we're gonna plug into that quadratic formula, as you can see here, right? The opposite of B would be negative three and then I plug everything else in and then I evaluate, you know, kind of one at a time following order of operations. Three squared changes to a nine, and then I multiply those three, negative four, one and negative four becomes positive 16. Underneath becomes square root of 25. But that is really plus or minus five, which is why we would solve it twice. Three plus that five, then divided by two, which is four, or three minus five divided by two, that's negative two over two, which is negative one. So that's a really good example there. If you want to write that down, I would maybe pause the video and just capture that. Now, there is a second way that we could potentially solve this problem. I'm wondering if you have any ideas of a second way to solve this. We could certainly graph. So let's just go take a look at Desmos quick. And what are we trying to find when we are graphing inside of Desmos? Y equals it was x squared plus 3x minus 4. And there is my graph. If you look at this graph, we have a point here, negative 4, 0, and a point there, which was 1, 0. Hmm. What did I type in wrong? x squared plus 3x minus 4. x squared plus 3x minus 4. So you'll see we got two intercepts, negative 4 and a positive 1. All right. And that's going to relate to what we have in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I made one small mistake. I wonder if anybody caught it. We forgot to bring the negative 3 down. Negative 3. Negative 3. So negative 3 plus 5 becomes 2 over 2, which is 1. Negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So we can use the graph to check, right? Notice that I, I found that we had a small error. And so our intercepts, these x-intercepts are also called solutions or they're called roots, okay? Solutions are also called roots or x-intercepts. 
they are all interchangeable for what we are doing. But this quadratic formula will work for almost anything. Case in point, a first aid heli helicopter is dropping a package of medical supplies to the ground below. All right. The function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 2 t plus 50 gives the approximate height in feet above the ground that the package is t seconds after the package is dropped. How many seconds elapse from the time the package leaves the helicopter until the package hits the ground. Well, remember, the key in that is when it hits the ground, its height will be zero. And so we can set this entire equation, negative 16 t squared plus 2t plus 50 equal to zero, because we want to know when the package hits the ground. And therefore, now that I have it written this way and it equals zero, what's the A value? Negative 16. What's the B value? 2. And what's the C value? 50. Why is that helpful? Well, we can now use the quadratic formula in our calculator to help us simplify. The opposite of B, or negative 2, plus or minus the square root of B squared which is 2 squared, minus 4 times the A value, oops, negative 16, times that C value, all over twice A. So all over 2 times negative 16. And it'll be helpful once again if we could go to Desmos and type that in. So let's go not to the graphing calc. Well, we could do the graphing calculator. It'll still work on here, but I'm going to go to the scientific one because the scientific calculator has the buttons built in for us. So I'm going to hit the fraction bar and I'm going to type the equation in negative two plus, and then we've got to insert this square root two squared minus four times the A value, which we said was negative 16, times the C value, which we said was 50, all over 2 times negative 16 gives us a value of negative 1.71. So let me just copy that and bring it over. So that was one of them. That was using the plus sign. All right, so now instead of that plus sign in there, we've got to change it so that we also have the subtraction sign. And again, this is what we did on um, Friday's video lesson. And so you'll see here now we have a different value, 1.83. When we look at these two possible answers, this was the addition, this was the subtraction. Notice we get a negative 1.7 and a positive 1.83. Which one of those is correct for this story problem? Well, it's only going to be the positive one because we're talking about time. Find how many seconds it takes for this package to hit the ground. 1.83 seconds. We can't have, sorry about that, we can't have a negative time for something to hit the ground. It can't go backwards in time. I mean, it would be pretty cool, but it can't. And so when we have story problems, we have to think about the context of our answer. Now, that's helpful because, again, they had the equation all set equal to zero if we knew that it hit the ground. That doesn't always happen. It's not always the case, like number five here. Solve x squared minus 3x equals 37. Remember, the first rule that I gave you was that our equation must equal 0. So I've got to move the 37 over to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. Once I do that, it should be easier to find the a, the b, and the c. A equals 1, 
B is negative 3 and C equals negative 37. I want you to pause the video here and go ahead and insert that information into the quadratic formula and let's see what you get. So there we have it. The opposite of B is positive 3 plus or minus square root of B squared, negative 3 squared, minus 4 times A times C all over twice A. And then we've got to simplify that. We're going to simplify that and see what we actually get. Uh, so why don't we hop over to Desmos again. We're going to uh, clear all of that and start with a new fraction. The opposite of B plus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times the C value, which was negative 37, all over 2 times 1. So by using the addition symbol, we got 7.76, x equals 7.76, or we gotta go back and make sure we also change the addition sign to a subtraction sign, and we got negative 4.76, negative 4.76. Should we have both answers? In this case, yes, because this is not a story problem and it's asking us to simplify. All right, I want you to try the next one on your own. Remember what has to happen first, second, third. So pause the video here and when you come back, you're gonna see my steps into solving. All right, step one, we had to get the equation equal to zero. So I subtracted two x subtracted 10. That will then allow me to say a was 4 and b is negative 2 and c is negative 10 to then plug in opposite of b which is 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 10 all over 2 times a which is 2 times 4. So what do we do from here? Well, we've got to go all the way back over to Desmos so that we can plug that information in. So let's clear all of that and do a fraction. The opposite of B, which was two plus the square root of B, which was the negative two. So we squared that minus four times the A value, which was four times the B value, which was negative 10 all over 2 times the a value, which was 4. Just make sure we've got that punched in correctly. So we got 1.85. x could equal 1.85. Or, got to make sure that we go back and change the plus to a subtraction. Negative 1.35, negative 1.35. And so again, as you're solving some of those, make sure you're following those steps. Set it equal to zero, find your A, B, C value, and then use Desmos correctly. If you have any questions at all about any of that process, please make sure that you reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.